Do you know what a standard Ford Mustang GT, but is loaded with a V8 5.2 twin turbo under the hood, have in common with Mitchell Oldenburg? They are both sleepers. This guy impressed the hell out of me at World Supercross there in Melbourne. He may, in fact, land himself on the podium more times than one this year in 2024 Supercross. What he was doing in the whoops, no one else was doing. He was going to the inside. Normally, guys would roll, then triple. He was wheel tapping almost all the way through the entire section. Let's watch it. He wheel tapped twice, wheel tap again. Those are four wheel taps. Damn near could have just blitzed the entire section on the back wheel. Here we go again. Twice. Four. Super impressive. One more time. No commentary. Some of the aggressive passing at World Supercross was initiated by... Yes, it was Freeze, but it was also Wills in this case who started the night off. This was Heat 1. He is the wild card. He is here on the inside, and he takes the line away from Vince, which not many people do this. However, we all know Vince is going to retaliate. That's just his brand. That's what he does. That's how he rides. But it's still good to see somebody picking a fight with <laughs> the most aggressive guy on the track. Here, Wills takes the inside, takes the line away from him, almost cleans him out. If he would have gone over the berm, would have been Dunzo over for Vince. Well, just a couple laps later, we've got Vince taking the line away from Wills. Just straight up, here's the rut. Just doesn't do it as aggressive as we've seen before. Just knocks him over to the point where Wills has nowhere to go. And he just hits the tough blocks and goes down. Definitely gets the short end of the stick on this whole deal. And later, we see Vince continue with the second race of the night on the start. He ends up taking out Joey Savacci. So here we are. Boom. Cleans him out hard. And the only problem I have with this, the first one I don't really have that big of a problem with because it was just block pass to block pass. This one, on the start, it's just dangerous because you've got so many other riders behind you, 20 others. And not only that, but when you're doing it to a rider that is leading the championship, he was tied with Roxon at this moment in time. That is a big no-no. And then second, it's a rider that you've ran into multiple times throughout the series when there's only two races and you hit this guy every race. That's to where it becomes an incident where it's, hey, stay away from the this rider or this guy in particular and let's just maybe calm it down a little bit. But that's, again, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. If you keep getting away with it, and there's really no retaliation, maybe you get a small penalty of a couple points, well, to me, that means the penalty wasn't sufficient enough because it continues to happen, right? I, again, like I said previously, I don't have a problem with what he did with Wills because he hit him first, he retaliated, those guys have never hit each other before, it wasn't that gnarly of an incident, but these two have got history. Again, this is the championship leader at the moment. Yes, Vince is going there as well for big money. This is a big money race. So you can see that implication in that side of it as well. That's my two cents. May it be right, may it be wrong. That's what it is. Right before the finish line, it was a double-double where we saw a lot of the 250s go triple single. And most of the 450s, that was the real race line. But in Super Bowl, guys are pulling out stuff that they normally don't do. At least in the racing, yeah, if some guy got away, they would hit this quad. On average, when they were racing within the pack, it was a triple single. Here's Kenny, who ended up with Super Bowl right before the finish line. NASCAR's himself around this 180 to seat bounce to quad. Super clean. And then beautiful scrub to stay low. Doesn't use a whole lot of brakes around the corner. You can see him rolling and accelerating and making sure that he's hitting this thing straight from the outside. 
Well done. What is a quad divided in half? The answer is two. You know what else you need two of? Two scoops of Coach Rob's energy fuel per serving. It's not the best joke, but I am going with it. This stuff is awesome. I live by it. You need around 300 calories per hour to sustain an effort without just completely falling on your face. And it doesn't matter if you're a weekend warrior to a psychopath that does six plus motos, Coach has you covered. You could do the energy fuel light if you're doing low intensity. If you're doing high intensity, I recommend energy fuel. That's what I like. It's got a lactic acid buffer in it. It's got the perfect amount of calories. For those guys that are doing the GNCCs plus, well, here, energy fuel plus. More calories, more carbohydrates, has you covered. Shop CoachRobStore.com. The number one thing that I want to see implemented here in the States when it comes to supercross racing, maybe just leave it for super motocross or maybe a triple crown. It is the metal ramps, the metal finish line ramps, because it makes for epic photo shoots and just highlights of the guys winning. It lets them just have this magazine cover, either knack knack or whip. We've got Max, who I think had the cleanest whip. Watch him as he comes over here. Super sweet, super sweet, but he's able to just get so sideways, point to the crowd, say he's number one, and it's all because of that metal ramp, because there's no ruts, and there's no G-outs at the bottom of it. When there's ruts and G-outs, the bikes have to say straight up and down. You can't get that thing to get sideways. You can't slip it. You can't have your weight way off to one side to have the back end slide around on you, and then you can move your hips back up there to get the motorcycle to come back it's the number one thing i would like to see supercross and super motocross take away from world supercross because again you guys know my ideology originality is undetected plagiarism everybody copycats everybody if you've made it this far in the video make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification icon i know a lot of you guys are deciding to do so. You like this series. I do it every week, and I'm going to continue to do it throughout the series and next year. So if you want to see more of this, make sure you are subscribed. Some of the biggest hits that we had for World Supercross was across the start, where most riders would go single, then double, then triple, where... These guys, the 450s, they would actually use the wall jump as a double. You've got Oldenburg and Ken Rocks in here. And watch as they do this massive double across the entire start to land, then to triple, and then triple into the corner and single out, which is super, super freaking impressive. Here, we'll watch that one more time because you can actually see the height that they get off coming right out of this 180-degree left-hand corner. Well, super high. And then we saw a couple quads on the section right after. We're going to see Joey Savacci here come around the 180. And he is going to go triple, quad, quad. There's the first quad over the table. Until next time, keep it WFO.